live. Happy Friday, everybody. Good evening. Happy Friday. Dieselman 74 from Ireland. What's up? Cheers back at you. Glenn B, what's up? Jay, how you doing? Happy Friday. Deborah, what's up? Peter, hello. Jeff Steen, what's going on? Danny, happy Friday, everybody. Richard from Nashville. All right, local. Love it. Stephen NH, what's up? Good evening. Jody One, great to see you. Dennis, what's up? Dustin, Amy, what's up? Michael, what's up? Mario, <laughs> Mario's back. Good job. Excellent, excellent. Will, hello. Laura, Tim, the Archimist from Brooklyn. All right, welcome. Jim Gregory, what's up? Scott, what's going on? Elias, welcome back. Rich, what's going on? Gary, what's up? Welcome for the first time. All right. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, just uh, expand the description below the video. We've got some tabs uh, that we're going to go through tonight. It's an acoustic workout, but uh, all of these exercises and musical examples can easily be transferred over to the electric guitar. Uh, Rad Flying V, as always, what's up? Davina Daniels from Oklahoma City. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, good day, Brian in Melbourne. Excellent. All right, we got the melon hat. Two for the plus one, the melon hat, Will. I love it. Cave City, uh, Kentucky. What's up, Mike? All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I appreciate you joining. Uh, like I said, expand the description below the video. Uh, there's a link to a PDF with the tabs. We're going to go through tonight sort of a mix of some uh, musical examples, uh, some exercises. Uh, Mark in Oregon, what's up? Musical U. Rich is asking me if I've heard of Musical U. I, I have not, unfortunately. Um, fill me in in the comments there. You can hear me okay out there. Uh, we have the PDF with the tabs. We'll go through. Dickie the dog, what's up? <laughs> He's on a plane. I like that. Uh, thanks for tuning in while you're waiting for takeoff. <laughs> uh, Elias, I'm starting to learn. I will follow Christ on guitar tricks. The E flat is killing me. Yes, that's the C chord. I believe it's the C chord. Moved up three frets, right? So you have to uh, kind of bar down. It's a finger twister for sure. So, uh, you know, just keep going with it best you can. Uh, you could also do it this way too. Okay, just uh, for those of you, I'm talking about an E flat major chord. And there's a way to play that as a bar chord based out of an open C shape, which would be the sixth fret of the A, fifth fret of the D, third fret of the G, and the fourth fret of the B string. Okay. But you could also grab it as an A shape, uh, so which is a little bit easier. Sixth fret of the A string bar down at the eighth fret of the D, G, and B. All right, so hopefully that helps out a little bit, Elias. I know it's uh, that's not an easy chord shape to get under the fingos. Jesse from New Mexico, welcome. Rick from California, I love it. Living with Grace from Oregon, all right, welcome. Steve in Alabama, love it. Richard, can't find the tabs. Uh, there's a link, it says get the tabs here, and then there's a link, uh, I mean, if you expand the description below the video, uh, there's a little blurb about what generally what we're doing tonight and then get the tabs for this session here and then there should be a link okay thanks for the ars it's awesome stuff all right love it that's spooky by the way those of you on guitar tricks i think spooky went up and what's really interesting is we shot that video like five years ago or something and i kind of got lost in editing <laughs> so uh it's sort of a it's sort of a vintage <laughs> I look a little different, a little younger. <laughs> Theodore, what's up? Erica, hello, hello. And Charles from Texas, welcome. All right. Uh, first exercise tonight, just uh, getting it going with some single notes. And using sort of, uh, you know, some people call this the bluegrass scale. So it's kind of a bluegrass kind of lick, single note lick. 
Uh, thanks, Russ, for that. Uh, by the way, Russ, uh, I'm going to post this. Uh, Russ had a question last week. I apologize, everybody. Uh, Russ had a question last week about interval training and uh, whether there was any interval training sort of quiz in the toolbox. And I, I checked into it, and apparently there hasn't really ever been one in the toolbox. Um, so I have a link here. Uh, hopefully this will work. Interval uh, training uh, test or exercises. And there's a link. Uh, it's an external link. There's not really anything on guitar tricks um, super specific like that other than what's uh, in the tutorials already, Russ. So uh, if you're looking for a little more stuff other than what our interval uh, – Interval stuff does in the tutorial. Uh, that's where Christopher Schlegel points his students is that link. Okay, so check out the link in the comments. Uh, thanks for making a comment there. I was hoping to hit you on the session tonight. So thanks for joining. Uh, there you go. Yes, another plus one for Spooky on guitar tricks. Jim Gregory's loving the solo on that. Yeah, cool solos. There's actually another uh, ARS tune coming on. I shot it a couple months ago. Uh, so Into You, I think, is the song. It's coming up. It's got more great soloing in it. So if you're an ARS fan, uh, just some really tasty stuff on that. And some cool, funky sort of uh, rhythm guitar stuff. <laughs> John, what's up? Good to see you. All right, back to exercise one, everybody. Sort of a single note uh, workout. Oh, yeah, Highway Song is edited. Uh, it's probably in the transcription phase right now. Of which there's probably a lot of transcribing because that's a long song with a lot of solos, right? Uh, Nikki, the dog's asking about a Blackfoot song called Highway Song that we uh, filmed a couple months ago now. I know that it's finished editing, but uh, th they're probably going to be transcribing it for a bit, but it'll be up soon. Hopefully in the next month or so. We'll see it a couple weeks. All right. Cool, cool. And uh, for those of you who don't know, that's all on guitartricks.com. Uh, check it out if you're not already a member. Uh, I think it's two weeks free right now. There's some there's some stuff in the in the description below here talking about stuff. So uh, check it out. That's where we have all the stuff that we're talking about. Um, so just thought for a single note warm up. You know, instead of doing a chromatic thing, let's uh, let's play something a little more sort of musical. And in this case, a little more bluegrassy. Um, so let me just play it for you first, and we'll talk about it a bit. This is exercise 1A. Ah. Okay. Using the major pentatonic scale in the key of A, but adding in just a, a chromatic little bit in it gives it a bluegrass flavor. So uh, the pentatonic scale, uh, major pentatonic, would be that. And that's adding in this extra chromatic note, uh, which in this case is the fifth fret of the G string. Okay, I think you can kind of sort of hear the sort of shape of that sound, uh, you know, so, sort of a typical bluegrassy kind of thing. All right. Uh, yes, a G run is another word for it, Rich. Thank you. Okay. Um, this time in the key of A, right? Um, so one of the things about this is that we're going up the major pentatonic scale, adding in that note. Then we end up on a higher A note, which is the octave, fifth fret of the high string. Position shift, seven, eight, nine. So again, with the chromatic idea, but then come down. 10 and seven of the B, nine of the G, okay? Ending it off with a triad shape. This is an A major triad up the neck in the ninth position, 11th fret of the D, 9th fret of the G, 10th fret of the B string. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. I'm reading some comments right now. So, Rich, thanks so much. Uh, yeah, come on back when you can. Check it out. It'll be up here. The video lives on, right, after the stream? Now, uh, Mario's asking, that's the triad shape at the end. Who who wanders how to play B, E, or flat E? Just use tree strings? Just use three strings. Okay. So I think we're asking about uh, how to play uh, E flat, maybe? Oh, who is wondering how to play E flat? Just use three strings. So you could do that. Yes. Getting back to E flat major, right? You can use that shape. The same shape as, now I got you, Mario. Here's the final triad chord of the A. If you use that shape down in the fourth position, so six, four, and five, Actually, that's not the right, that's E. One more, so five, three, and four. That's E flat, that's an E flat triad, okay? All I'm doing is using my pinky to put a lower root on it. And then it sort of becomes more of that open C shape. But you can see just for that triad shape, we're using a C shape, but just a little chunk of it, okay? I can do the same thing here with A. If I put my pinky up at the 12th fret of the A string, I can have that full A major chord, right? In this case, I'm just showing you the triad shape, okay? And this is known as a first inversion triad because the lowest note is the major third. So they call that a first inversion, right? Some of you have heard me talk about that stuff, right? Next thing I wanna talk about is the swing groove that's happening in this exercise one, okay? You can see, that we've got two eighth notes equal sort of a quarter and a, and a trip and a eighth note uh, triplet. And that is the, the, that denotes that we are doing swung eighths. So instead of one and two and three and four, which would be even um, downs and ups on the uh, quarters and eighth notes, which would sound like <laughs> that, we want to put a swing into it. So if we're doing down ups, eighth notes, that upstroke is going to be delayed a little bit to give it a little bit of bounce. Okay. Now I did notice I'm not playing it exactly as I tabbed it because I did realize that it's kind of a tough grab to go right into that triad at the end of that because you have to make a position shift. Like that. So you kind of delay it like a, a an eighth note, right? It kind of sounds cool. Just like cut off that last note and then finish off with the chord. All right, so nice and slow with that swing. Exercise one B is the lower octave of that. So we're just sort of playing this on a different part of the neck with some uh, lower notes. Okay. Ending off with a full A major bar chord, fifth position. All right, Nicky the dog, have a great flight. <laughs> excellent, excellent, okay. So there you go, a little bit of a warm up, right? And uh, something you can kind of play around with a little bit, uh, you know, bluegrass style, country bluegrass kind of style, and also gets the fingers warmed up, all that kind of stuff. All right? Excellent, excellent. Exercise two, back to straight time. A 16th note strum kind of came up with some uh, cool voicings with some ringing out open strings. Uh, so I'm gonna play through this and we'll talk about it a little bit.
that kind of a cool descending progression. Really just uh, using some open strings and moving some double stops down. So my first chord on this one is an A major chord, but using some open strings. Okay. What's up, Kenneth? Welcome. I uh, actually sort of didn't give you the uh, full chord on that because uh, there's an, a B note added to that. So that's actually an add nine, A add nine chord. Okay. Uh, Kevin, what's up? Welcome. Thanks for joining. So I'm grabbing the seventh fret of the D, sixth fret of the G. I've got the open A, open B, and open high E string. Nice floaty, open, sussy kind of sound, right? And my strum pattern on this is down, 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 up. Okay, so if, first thing I want to do is look at that, and I can kind of see quarter note, then an eighth note, and two sixteenth notes. So one E and a two. I can see that that strum pattern is used over the first three bars of this progression. So I can kind of practice it a little bit, not worrying about the chord changes, just stay on one chord and make sure that you've got the flow of the strum and kind of burn it into your uh, muscles a little bit, burning it in, into your ears a little bit, right? <laughs> Strumming tip, you also want to keep this going, right? When you got downs and ups, but you have stuff, you know, different lengths of things, you don't kind of, you don't want to stop your strum. You don't want to interrupt it. Okay. You have much smoother time, much more solid time if you kind of keep this motion going, right? I'm doing it in 16th notes, right? One E and a two E and a three E and a four. Keep it nice and relaxed. If you tense up a little bit, it tends to get a little bit more aggressive sounding and maybe not quite as, as uh, smooth timing, right? So then what I'm going to do is move this double stop down so that it's going to be the sixth fret of the D, fourth fret of the G. And this sort of outlines, again, to use this shape again. If I do an E major chord, but then just use the D and G fretted notes and play it against these open strings. You get a nice floaty chord, which is basically, basically an E major with an A in the bass. So you see it written on my uh, on the tabs, E slash A, which means it's an E chord, but there's an A in the bass. That's what that means. Okay. Same shape down two more frets at the top of the second bar. Okay, Tien, what's up? Okay. Amy is uh, asking, my left wrist always starts hurting when I try and stretch for a chord. Is this normal? Well, you might feel a little bit because your, your fingers aren't used to going for those stretches, right? Uh, so a little tip here. Uh, anytime you sort of feel some pain, you probably want to stop what you're doing right away. And the second thing you want to try and do is ease it ease those uh, those finger positions into your muscles, okay? You don't want to go for the big stretches right away. So for example, uh, if it's uh, a chord down here where you're stretching between three fingers, let's say, and I don't know exactly what chords we're trying to play, but let's say it's something like this, where I've got the index finger, ring finger, pinky, okay? And I find it's a little bit too much of a stretch and it hurts my hand trying to get it into position. What you try, want to try need, what you want to try to do is move it up the neck to uh, where the frets are a little bit closer together. And it should be a little bit easier to get those chord shapes. Okay. Um, so the general idea is you know, if it's too much of a stretch down the neck, move it up the neck and just work on putting your fingers in position um, gradually, okay? Because you want to program the fingers and stretch them out to be able to do this, right? But too much of a stretch at first might be a little painful. So 
Just do it where you can kind of do it and then just work your way down the neck with it. Okay. And try a little bit each and every day and see if you can bring it down. Okay. Eventually once, you know, you keep working on the fingers and programming that you will find that it'll get easier and easier to do those tougher stretches. Okay. But it's all about practicing it, get your fingers going, like just the motion of just putting the fingers on, make sure the notes are ringing nicely off do it again, repetition, right? And do it up the neck so that it's not as much of a stretch. And then just gradually bring it down as your fingers get more and more relaxed on the fretboard. Hope that helps. Amy, all right, great question or great comment. Uh, all right, so we've got... Coming down to the E, from starting the A, going to the E, and then sort of have an A6 sound. James, what's up? Welcome. Because I'm adding an F sharp to the fourth fret of the D string. Okay. And uh, still got a B and E up top, so uh, you know, it's still got a sus sound. And then from that chord, I'm going to just add the fourth fret of the A string onto it and make that the root. So it's more of an F, sh F sharp minor seven sound with sort of the fifth in the bass. What's up, Larry? Welcome. So the first two bars. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, still got a little bit of a lingering cough here, folks. All right, so uh, in the second line, now we've got a B chord. We're actually getting a B power chord, second fret of the A, fourth fret of the D and G adding it to our open top strings. So that gives us a B sus four sound. Another great chord, same strums, right? Down, 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 up. Gonna move that shape up two frets. Now I've got a C sharp minor seven chord, the way it works out with those open strings. Another great voicing of that chord. And then I'm gonna move it up to the seventh fret. I'm gonna add the low E string. And that gives me an E power chord, basically, with some open strings. Really cool sound. Okay. So starting from that B chord, the strum's the same in the third bar. But let, let's, let's look at the strum in the last bar. When we get up to the E chord, doing something a little different. Down, down, up, up, down, down. It's a little bit of an expanded strum there, okay? Um, once again, these are 16th notes, so down, down, and up, up, down, 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 up. Okay, so you want to stay on that for a little while. Bring that in a little bit, okay? So one more time all the way through. Let's see if I can get it nice and clean. So on the acoustic guitar especially, but this works great on electric as well. If you got a clean sound and you use those open strings, ring it out, it sounds nice and rich. But particularly on the acoustic, really comes alive with these kind of voicings, right? So experiment. Always experiment with chord shapes and add some open strings to it and see what you can make happen, okay? And uh, to those of you joining for the first time, and I know I mentioned this uh, you know, pretty regularly, but the idea behind these tabs just to expose you to, to a few approaches, a few little musical examples, some exercises. And uh, the idea is I don't want you to just stop at learning them and then moving on. I want you to kind of experiment with them, like see if, what you can pull out of these to expand uh, the ideas and uh, try a bunch of different stuff. And, you know, kind of go with your ears, see what sounds cool and what you can discover. Okay, that's the whole idea behind it. 
It's the fun part behind it, right? All right. Excuse me while I pop a Ricola and we'll move on to exercise three, some triads, okay? I came up with a uh, sort of a, uh, a triad progression, a couple examples of a triad progression. Um, it's always a good idea to kind of go over these triad shapes, three note chords. You know, we talked a little bit about that before. Uh, I think it was, who was it? Oh man, can't remember now, bad memory. But uh, we were talking about it a little bit with the triad shapes. Um, really good things to know for just economical little chords that you can play all over the neck. So I want to expose you to uh, these shapes as much as possible. In exercise 3A, we're starting with... Uh, what I'm doing in this exercise is basically adding triad shapes to a pedal note, which would be an open string. So in exercise 3A, I'm doing it for the open A string, okay? So we're starting with A minor. The shape is the seventh fret of the D, fifth fret of the G and B string. If I just play those three notes, that gives me all the notes of A minor, okay? And that shape can be used on the D, G, and B string uh, for any chord, any minor chord. You just transpose it to the root note, which would be on the D string. In this case, it's A, seventh fret of the, a, of the D string, sorry. Okay. Now I'm adding the open A string to it, and our strum is a down, up, down. So what I've got are eighth notes, and there's two eighth notes in between each strum. So I'm strumming on the first beat, the and of two, which is an upstroke, and then the fourth beat which is a down. That's exercise 3A played through a couple times. So we have this one. A minor triad. Uh, we're going to keep ramping on that open A string, but move into a different shape. 10, 9, and 10 on the D, G, and B. That's the next inversion of A minor. Okay? So triads are really cool because you can create the sound of something ascending without actually changing the chord. I haven't changed to a different chord. It's still an A minor. But I've moved up playing sort of a higher note that's in the chord. And it gives this feeling of motion, right? So it's a great way. If I wanted to keep going, I can keep going up the neck a little bit, but I just went to the next one. Okay. Bev, what's up? Welcome. For those of you just joining, expand the description below the video and click the link for the tabs that we're going through tonight. So that low note is a C note. So that's the minor third. So that's a first inver inversion A minor triad on the D, G, and B string. That's a particular shape right there. Right, next chord is a D minor triad. So I'm actually going to the original shape that we used at the fifth position, or seven, five, and five of the D, G, and B and just moved it up so that D was the lowest note, 12th fret of the D string. And that same shape gives you a D minor. Now I'm playing it against an open A chord or an open A root. So it has a little bit of a different sound. Okay. Now I've got nine, seven, nine on the D, G, and B string. That's an E7 slash A. Now, important thing here is that um, seventh chords, uh, you can't really technically play a full seventh, well, you can't play a, a full seventh chord with triads because seven chords have four notes in them, okay? But I can imply 
a seventh chord. I can take three of the notes from a seventh chord and play it as a three note chord. Technically, you probably shouldn't call it a triad, but this particular shape comes out of the full E7 bar chord shape, just pulling out the D, G, and B string, okay? And playing it against that open A, which gives it a little bit of tension. But that's cool. I'm basically going through an, a one, four, five progression in the key of A minor. Now with E7 being at the five chord, that's sort of, a, you know, usually in a minor key, you would expect that five chord to be minor as well. But a very common substitution is to make it major and specifically a major, uh, a dominant seventh chord, which is what we're sort of outlining here. Sort of a classical approach a little bit, but it's very common. So. Thought it was a pretty cool little uh, thing to play around with. Now we got exercise 3B. I decided to put the same progression, but up a fourth. Excellent, Russ. I love it. I love the light bulb moments. <laughs> um, I decided to put it up a fourth into the key of D minor. And now I'm using triad shapes on the top three strings. So you're going to see some different shapes playing these minor chords uh, until the end, which is an A7. And, and once again, we're just going to grab three of the four notes of A7 to kind of imply that chord. Uh, so exercise 3B looks like this. Cool sound. I like the way that these chords sound against the root of the key that we're in all the way through, right? So you've got a D minor. What's up, Doug, in Denver? <laughs> Thanks for joining. Um, seventh fret of the G, sixth fret of the B, fifth fret of the high string. And again, just those three notes, the low note being the D note. So that spells your D minor triad right there. And the next shape is actually easier to get. For D minor, the next version of it on the top three strings is just bar down on the 10th fret. Okay. When I go to G minor, I'm using the same shape as I did in the fifth position, but moving it up to the 10th position. And then for A7, you'd recognize sort of the shape from the open D7 chord, right? And if you just slide it up so that it's in the ninth, eighth, and ninth fret of the G, B, and high E string, okay, you get A7, or you're implying an A7 chord against that open D string. So I think that's pretty cool, right? Amy has got to go. Well, I appreciate you hanging out. And yes, uh, go to the Guitar Tricks channel on YouTube and all of our Friday live streams are up there along with a ton of other con content. Okay, so you can check out all sorts of stuff on the Guitar Tricks channel here on YouTube. Okay. Love it, Mario. Thank you. Cool, cool. That's awesome. All right. Exercise four. Uh we're on the acoustic, so let's do some sort of typical acoustic open chord sort of embellishments and things that you can do uh, to kind of spice things up a little bit when you're accompanying a singer or playing along with a, with a song that, you know, where you find yourself vamping on chords, uh, you know, for multiple bars. And instead of just strumming the chord all the way through multiple bars, there's little devices, little uh, ideas and embellishments that you can do that really add a lot of interest and texture to what you're doing. So uh, what we've got right here is basically an F to a C progression, one bar each. And so if I was just to play an F chord, you know, like, uh, you know, kind of, you know, to up to C kind of thing, right? You can do that and strum those. Uh, but there's other things you can do here as well. Uh, 
that's the idea. We've got a couple of things going on. So the first thing going on on the F chord is that we're not playing the full bar chord shape. We're just playing the top four strings. That allows us to sort of utilize that open G string and some different fingers onto the chord to, to add some interest. So what I'm doing is starting with the open G string. I've got the third fret of the D string, which is the root, the F note, barring down on the fifth of the first fret of the top two strings. And I'm gonna strum it and then hammer onto the second fret, which you're hammering onto the major third of the chord. So you're hammering on to make it an F major from an F sus two. So right there, that adds some interest. Even if you just did that, that adds a lot, right? If you're just strumming an F chord. Okay. In this case, I'm doing it. Got a couple strums after. Then I'm adding my pinky on to the third fret of the G string onto the chord. That makes it a sus four. So another floaty kind of in-between chord. And then I'm gonna, on the upstroke, come back to the F major. All right, that's the strum pattern and that's sort of the shape you've got. Sort of added a melody to that chord, right? So it's really cool to kind of add this kind of stuff in when you're just sort of stuck on an F chord for, you know, how, how many ever bars, right? and just doing a strum. You can do the same thing to the C chord, and this time you're opening up the D string, okay? So third fret of the A, starting on the open D, as well as the open G in the first fret of the B string, and then hammering on to the second fret of the D string to make it a full C major from the C sus two, right? Again with my pinky, this time third fret of the D string adding on to the chord. And back to the C. Right? And you can fill in the strums, you can experiment with this. Lots of different little variations and things that you can kind of play around with on that. Okay. All right. Let's take a question. Models and trains. Thanks for the question. Hi from the UK. Back at you. All right. Just a little question. Having a little problem trying to play the B minor seven chord. Uh, keep muting while hammering. Something like that is kind of what I'm thinking. That's long range running, uh, long train running kind of. Right? And you're basically hammering on like you've got a full bar from the second fret all the way up and hammering on to the fourth fret of the D and third fret of the B is, is sort of what I'm thinking you're doing. And uh, haven't having trouble to keep muting while hammering. Huh. Not quite exactly sure what uh, sort of the problem is with that a little bit. Keep muting while hammering. Um, in the case of that song, I mean, I know there's some muted strums in between, so kind of, you know, the way to get that is sort of just release the pressure. It's not really ringing out clear when hammering on. Okay, okay, so that that's good. It okay, gets us a little bit closer. Um, yeah, for, as far as the muting, you want to release the pressure off the chord, but don't move your fingers from where they are. You just want to release the pressure, but still sort of rest your fingers on the strings. Okay, 
Now, to get it to ring clear when hammering on, that is something you have to work on, okay? So a couple tips. First one, that's a hard move down in the second position. Um, so, like, uh, you know, very similar to what I was talking about before, move it up to the ninth or 10th fret and work on it up top. Frets are a little bit closer together. Okay. And hopefully if you're on an acoustic, hopefully your action is still okay. Cause that could be a problem. If your guitar is not set up right or set up optimally might be even harder to do it up top. Okay. Um, some exercises to just work on finger strength is just the trill exercise. Practice your hammer-ons and pull-offs one finger at a time, one string at a time. That kind of idea, okay? Okay, a couple of minutes of that, you know, two to five minutes every day. Working your fingers that way is going to strengthen them. So that you can come up to, uh, let's say, the seventh fret. And that's an exercise to practice. Hammer on. And then pull off. And just see if you... You know, there's really no other way to do it. There's no silver bullet. You got to just uh, keep doing that. And, you know, you know, you have to, like, get that, uh, your dexterity so that you're hitting the string in the right spot, right? And you got to get enough strength in there. Okay, so. So a couple of minutes of that, two or five minutes of day. Just doing that, okay? You can do the same thing with pull-offs. Try to get those nice and ringing out clear, okay? Does that make sense? Hopefully that helps. All right. Uh, next exercise, exercise five. Excellent. Good, good, good. <laughs> oh, Laura. <laughs> there you go. Picking up the acoustic after a month. Yeah, feels like uh, you maybe lost a little bit of something, right? So uh, hopefully... This is why, uh, yeah, fingers hurt. It's also, uh, you know, the best you can do to play as often as possible, you know, and I realize, you know, kind of, you know, we lead busy lives, so it's tough to play every day. But if you can, that's optimum, right? Dewey Tong, what's up? Welcome from Vietnam. All right. Um, hopefully I didn't butcher your name too badly. All right. Thanks for, for, for dropping in. Um, you can play every day, get those cal keep those calluses going, right? Even just a little bit, even just a little bit a day, we'll keep it up. I know it's not always possible, but we do the best, right? Yeah, there you go, Dustin. 15 minutes a day, I'll keep it up somewhat. <laughs> Optimal if you can do an hour, right? That's the guitar teacher talking. So exercise five, let's talk a little bit about Oh, it's the action. Yeah, that'll get you. Okay. Um, what's up, Gerald from Ottawa? Right on. Uh, Manjeev is asking, how do we practice to correct our finger position? Um, hmm. Not sure exactly what you're getting at with that question as far as finger position. How do we practice to correct our finger position? Um, with practice, it's all about repetition. So if you're talking about fretting a chord, like if you want to correct the way your fingers are fretting a chord so that every note rings out clearly, what you have to do is just over and over, put those fingers on the chord, curl them up so that each note rings out clearly. And once you get the fingers to where they need to be in order for each note to ring out clearly. You take it off, you shake it out, and you go right back to it. It's the repetition of putting those fingers on over and over and over again that corrects any kind of finger position problem, right? I, I was using chords as an example. But anything, you've just got to go slow, you've got to execute properly, and 
shake it off, repeat, shake it off, repeat, shake it off, repeat over and over and over. And that reprograms everything. Okay. Christopher, what's up from Alabama? I love it. Excellent. Hopefully Manji, that sort of gives you some direction, sort of helps a little bit. Exercise five. Let's do some walk-ups and walk-downs. So this is a little more of a beginner, uh, well, beginner to intermediate kind of thing. A uh, little bit more of a straightforward idea here. I'm going to use an, a C chord starting off. Uh, third fret of the A, second fret of the D, open G, first fret of the B, and the open high E string. And you can see I'm going to start with the root note. Ryan, what's up? Welcome. So a pick of the root and then a strum of the rest of the chord. Okay. Third fret of the low string gives you the root fifth motion. Okay, I've got the root, third fret of the A. If I move that down to the third fret of the low string, that gives me the fifth of the chord, the G. Okay. Country sort of idea there, right? Doug, no, no questions off limits. All right, I'll do my best to answer. Okay, Daryl, what's up? Elias is asking, do you practice hand strumming? Sure, if you're into, if you're not into using a pick, you know, kind of use sort of the sides of your nails, maybe. You're maybe not going to be quite as precise as a pick would be, but you got the idea, right? That kind of thing. I think is that what you mean, Elias? Hopefully. You can absolutely practice without a pick, right? Let's strum it up. All right, so that's the exercise, right? So we started with the C chord and then some walk ups going up the C major scale. So two picks on the C note, third fret of the A, and then open D, open, second fret of the D, leading us to the F note, third fret of the D string. Gonna do the same thing, thing here. So third fret of the, the D string, second fret of the G, barring down at the first fret of the top two strings. Root on the D string. Strum on the top three strings. Down to the C note for the fifth, right? Root, fifth. And then coming back down to the C major scale. Back to C, same thing. Now coming down the C major scale to G, right? coming back up to C, okay? Uh, pretty straight ahead idea there, um, just walking, you know, like we've got a C chord, an F chord, and a G chord. So these are all in the key of C. We've got a one, four, and a five chord. And we're using notes from C major to kind of walk between the chords. That's really all that's happening here, right? Starting on the root. Go up to the fourth note in the scale, which is the root of the four chord, F. Coming down the scale to C, right? And then coming down from the root to seven, major seventh, major sixth, to the fifth, which is the root of the, the five chord, which is the G chord, right? So you've got those notes. are all from C major and you're just using those notes to go up and down between the chords. It's just one. Yeah, right? Walk the line. You know, lots of kind of country ideas. Okay. Um, that's the idea is you can uh, do some walk ups and walk downs between these chords to create some interest, right? 
let's see. We got some questions here. Uh, Elias, I find that I'm breaking the guitar. I find that I'm breaking the guitar when I try to strum without a pick. Are you breaking, uh, breaking your timing? Maybe is what you mean. Um, you know, when you strum without a pick, it's usually just really relaxed and kind of just relaxed up here. Like, don't tense up. Try to keep it as relaxed as you can. Okay, last thing to note here is in the G chord, uh, the fourth bar of exercise five, because we're already on the low string, right? With the root, you've got to pick that open D string to get that higher fifth note, right? That's the only monkey wrench right there, right? Because on the C and F chord, we're coming down for the fifth. And the F, right? Right? <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, Manjeev, my finger two and three stay very close to each other, which creates difficulty in screeching. Solution, please. Uh, stretching. Stretching is what you mean. Creating different, your, your finger two, your second and third finger stay very close to each other, which creates difficult, difficulty in stretching. So work on that, work on that up the neck, okay? Where you can do it between those two fingers, where this, the frets are closer together, okay? Work on it and just progress your way down the neck until you can't do it, okay? If you can't do it, can't get the stretch at a certain part, part of the neck, it means you have to be up a fret or two from there. And just on and off and work up there to build the strength between the fingers. Okay? Does that make sense? Hopefully. Okay? Uh, let's see. One more question. Is there an easier alternative for a B major chord? Uh, kind of. Yeah, I mean, it's mostly going to be bar chords, right? But you can play the higher triads, right? Like, for example could play you know instead of this full b chord right here you can just play the triad right which is one finger fourth fret of the d g and b beyond that there's a triad shape up here four four and two on the g b and high e string so and then up here you've got triads up here you can play like three notes right like uh nine, eight, and seven on the D, G, and B, or eight and then seven on the top two strings, eighth on the G string. Okay, so triads, I guess, is probably what I would suggest if you want an easier alternative for a B chord, then just play a B triad somewhere, because it's just going to be three notes, right? So that way you avoid doing like a full bar chord, which maybe you're not quite there yet on that, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, phrasing tricks, please. Michael, uh, phrasing's a whole hour. <laughs> so uh, I've got uh, tabs. Uh, you can expand the des description below the video. And uh, I've got some tabs that we're running through. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll try and include some phrasing stuff next week. We're going to be on the electric. I think it's an electric workout. And uh, we'll do some phrasing next week if you want to tune in then. Uh, but a huge subject, right? So uh, I've got a few minutes left. Uh, I uh, regretfully will not be able to delve into it. But thanks for the question. I will try to get to it next week. Uh, Daryl, how do you get your fingers to bend back? Uh, yeah, I think maybe you mean curling back like this. You got to maybe push your... Um, Okay, well, Michael's searched on guitar tricks. Okay, so I will add a little bit more. Um, if you're looking for stuff on guitar tricks, look at any of the lead guitar lessons. Also, start learning solos, note for note. Okay, pick some songs that you really like and start learning 
the licks. Start learning solos. Because if you learn a lot of solos, that will boost your instinct for phrasing. Okay? Um, there's no sort of, I don't know, phrasing tricks. The last one I'll throw out here real quick. Okay, phrasing trick is to think like a singer. This works really well in blues. Okay? Um, if you're soloing over a blues, think what the singer would do and try to kind of model it on the guitar. Okay? That's always a no-brainer for phrasing is to think like a singer. Okay? So hopefully those are a few things to maybe kind of explore without getting too crazy <laughs> into the subject, which I could go on and on and on and on about. Uh, let's see. How do you finger bend your finger back bar chords like A? Is that what you mean? With one finger? Right? Or playing the B with one finger? So, Daryl, you're asking, like, how, how do you, with the third finger, how to press that? I, you know, I'm really sorry. I still don't know exactly. Bar chords like A with one finger, third finger. Um... Good question. I, I'm just not sure exactly what you're getting at, so I apologize. I'm really sorry. <laughs> My finger don't bend backwards. So uh, maybe you just can't make a bar. Okay. Kyle's saying double bar. So maybe try some multiple fingers. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to bar down on one finger. You can use three multiple fingers, right? Okay. You can play an A chord with three fingers. Okay? Maybe try that. Like on a B bar. Yeah? Right? I'm not saying it's easy, but you can do it. Okay? Um, and that's another one you want to... It's tough because you run out of real estate. You don't up too far, but... Another thing you can do is for a B chord, I, I realize I'm off on a tangent a little bit. You know, I'm trying to kind of be as thorough as I can with some of these questions. Second fret of the uh, A string is your root. And uh, if you curl your finger to mute the D string and then just put your fingers on the fourth fret, like your ring and pinky on the fourth fret of the G and B. It's not quite as full, but you're still getting a B major. Right? Now, we're talking about this. Right? Try your pinky. Can your pinky bend down? do it with your pinky, then do it with your pinky. But if your fingers won't bend with that, then that's a tough one. Okay? Then you kind of almost, you got to use multiple fingers. And, you know, try to drape maybe the pinky down to cover two of them. Right? Hopefully those are some ideas for you. <laughs> uh, I apologize if I'm not quite there with the explanation you need, but... Uh, but just try multiple fingers, try combining things, right? Use the pinky. All right? All right, we'll get to the last three exercises, okay? Uh, exercise six, and I'll go back and answer the questions after, you know, we've got a couple minutes here to go through these. Uh, this is exercise six. Okay, using some harmonics, okay? So, you got the A string, open A string. You've got 7th fret of the D, 6th fret of the G. Those are 
ASUS 2 again. And if you just, on top of the fifth fret, fret wire, and if you just touch, touch the string and kind of ping it and let the finger off, you get what's called a natural harmonic. And so you can add this to chords. And you can also get it at the seventh fret as well. Okay, and there, you'll also find it at the 12th fret. Those are where they're the strongest on the guitar. Fifth, seventh, and twelfth. Okay, but you can add it to chords. Okay, so that's exercise six uh, on guitar tricks. Check out the uh, harmonics lessons if you need like a lot more instruction on that kind of stuff. I'm kind of I just want to play through these last examples before I lose y'all, right? Uh, acoustic blues, exercise seven. Um, kind of playing off the boogie stuff. All right, Russ, right on. Okay. Just playing off the boogie, A power chord with a boogie. Um, two strings, A string, D string, okay? And I'm doing a down-up shuffle. So not, you know, uh, straight time. It's going to be a shuffle. So that upstroke is going to be delayed a little bit. Okay. Adding on to the power chord, the fourth and the fifth fret on the D string, you can see that. Adding on to the power chord third and fourth fret of the A string give you that sort of bluesy kind of minor third, major third kind of sound. And then sliding up to infer a dominant A7 shape with three notes. Seventh fret of the D, sixth fret of the G, eighth fret of the B. Okay. We're going to do the same idea on the four chord, which is the next line down. Okay, upper shape is fifth fret of the G, seventh fret of the B, eighth fret of the high string. Kind of outlines a D7, right? But it's the same riff otherwise on the next string set. Go back to the one chord. Turn around. We're going to play the first bar of that riff, but move it down a string set to the E chord. Then go to the D chord. So now you're moving it up to the open D string, G string. And here's the turnaround. Okay, so off the A chord, playing an A power chord, and then sliding up to the fifth fret of the D string, playing triplets against the fifth fret of the high string, which is the A. Okay, or you can pick it off I'm using, a high, I'm using a pluck on the top string. But you can pick that if you want. Coming down chromatically on the D string, ending up on an E7 open E7 chord, right? And then going up to some dominant ninth chords, starting on F9, going to E9, giving you that chromatic sound, right? So let's see if I can play through a 12 bar blues on this. fast so that was a little sloppy but hey sometimes the blues is cool when it's sloppy right last little riff exercise eight modern country acoustic little riff okay right on brian appreciate the kind of words awesome 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 <laughs> 
Um, so exercise eight, uh, let's see if I can remember this one. All right. Uh, This one off a top 50 uh, or top 20 country song on the charts right now. I think it's Morgan Wallen or something. Um, cool thing here are some muted strums, okay? And but you know, kind of a simple part, just really sort of playing off power chords, right? Uh, starting off the D chord, and then your muted strum is when you're you're strumming the strings, and you're just gonna put your fingers down to mute. The strings, right? Your uh, fretting fingers just draped across the string. Sliding up to the fourth fret of the D and including that onto the second fret. And that's just going to the major third of a D chord. So it still sounds good. And then on the end of four, going to the A chord, so then open A. Coming up with the higher part of the chord, mute. And then a little bit of a little lick right here, sliding the fourth fret of the A string and just arpeggiating. That was a cool riff. All right. So I've successfully played through the exercise, the exercises. Uh, well, I don't know if, how successfully on the blues, but, uh, you know, close enough for rock and roll, right? <laughs> um, cool, cool. Uh, if I didn't get to your question, I apologize. We will try and do it uh, next week. Bring it next week. Uh, we're going to be on the electric next week. Uh, super appreciate everyone hanging out tonight. All the regulars, thanks as always for your support and all the new people hanging out and checking it out. I appreciate you joining tonight and uh, doing that. All right. Okay, everybody. Thanks so much for the kind words. Uh, oh, wait, Doug's got a question. Do I use a softer pick on the acoustic than the electric? Yes, I do. I like the softer. This is a uh, 0.71. I usually use around one on the electric and this is a 0.7. So I like it a little bit better, a little bit softer, right? <laughs> cool. All right, everybody. Take care. Have a great weekend. Have a great next week. One more time, please, for the natural harmonics tricks. Uh, All right, everybody, take care. Have a great one. We'll see you next Friday. All right. Cheers. <laughs>